Hey guys, what is going on? This is Cardinal Bird 5 and today I have a pitching tutorial for you guys. I'm going to talk about analog pitching. Now this isn't going to be uh, exactly about like all the pitching tips in the world. It's going to be more or less focused on the actual interface itself for analog pitching. Now in my opinion, I believe analog pitching is probably the best way to go. They have tweaked it this year as it is a little bit more difficult, but as you can see here, if you execute your interface and hit your spots, uh, you know, for the most part, you're going to hit your general location. That cannot be said really for the other interfaces. Um, the closest one might be meter. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and talk about some of the pros and cons of using the analog. Uh, pros, like I just said, if you hit your spot more often than not, it will hit in that general vicinity. Now I will say it's a little different this year. Uh, I've seen a few times, especially pitchers with not great control where you get in perfect execution and you miss your spot by a tad. Uh, there is some variance there for sure and I don't know whether I like that or not. I think if you you know get a perfect green like in 2k I think you should hit your spot. You know it's not it's not really that easy to hit your spot either. Um, it's easier with pitchers uh, with high walks per nine. Uh, so yeah. Anyways um, some cons. Now if you are new to analog pitching and you have never used it before it is going to be very difficult for you to use it first unless you're just really good at uh, using the analog if you're good at things like Tiger Woods Golf or whatever it's called now Roy McIlroy if you're good at things like that you would probably be good with the analog it took me a while to get used to it and what I had to do was play some road of the show I made a pitcher and it took me a little bit uh, to get used to it so um, it's pretty straightforward pros and cons I really think it's the best interface I think it's the hardest one but like I said if you can master it it's going to be the most accurate for you so let's actually talk about how some attributes work, excuse me, how attributes work um, and how some of them affect the interface. Now again, it's going to be dependent on who's pitching. So in this video, we're going to use Kershaw as an example. And I don't think I can show his per nines, but I know they're either in the high 80s or low 90s. Um, but let's talk about the per nines that matter. First off, let's throw out hormones per nine. It doesn't really affect anything. Now walks per nine. And control those are probably two things you're thinking that affects you know how accurate you can be uh, with the analog now I'm here to say that I tested control a few years ago so I'm pretty confident that control is uh, really not that important and you really want to focus on the walks per nine attribute and again I have an old video if you guys want to look it up in MLB 16 um, what does walks per nine do and what does control do and I talk about it I really couldn't find anything that control could do. Maybe it has more of an impact this year since there is a little bit of variance, uh, even for pitchers that even really have uh, you know that good walks per nine. But you know, I really haven't noticed it too much. Um, so yeah, I'm still going to uh, stick by my guns here and say that walks per nine is the main thing you want to look for when dealing with your precision with the analog. Uh, so what does walks per nine actually do? So it actually makes your interface a little bit easier to use. All the interfaces across the board. But strictly speaking about analog, what it does is it makes it less sensitive. Um, so the higher walks per nine you have, uh, the less sensitive it will be, and vice versa. If you have a lower walks per nine, um, but somebody like Batansis, it's really noticeable. It's very sensitive. Like if you just barely move the stick into the right, you know, it's it's really hard to um, hit your spot. And I feel like with a high walks per nine, it kind of magnitude towards your spot, towards those corners a little bit more, if that makes sense. So in general, it just feels easier. And if you guys have used analog for a while now, you can probably, uh, you probably know what I'm talking about. So those, you know, that's the big thing you want to focus for pitchers' attributes. A walks per nine does affect your interface and how easy it is to use it. Uh, you also have hits per nine and K per nine. What that does is it counteracts the opponent's PCI. All right, so talking about K per nine specifically, it's going to directly counteract a batter's plate vision. So you can see Rizzo here as he goes yard. So whatever Rizzo's plate vision is. Uh, it's pretty much going to counteract that number and it's going to nullify his plate vision. Now if it's a high K per 9, it's going to nullify it a lot more obviously and if it's a low K per 9, it won't affect it as much. Uh, the same for hits per 9 and contact. The higher hits per 9, the more it will counteract uh, the contact attribute. So pretty self-explanatory. Um, now let's actually talk about how the pure analog mechanism works in practice. So what you want to do is I've been throwing a lot here. So what you want to do is you want to aim your pitch. You guys can see I'm aiming a fastball up and in here. And you guys can see uh, if you look above the strike zone, 
you'll see that is where I need to get my analog. So what that means is I have to bring the right stick down and then I want to push up as soon as I get to that yellow line. I want to push up and to the right. You guys can see I didn't hit my spot perfectly. But I want to push up and to the right. And now if I get a good execution, it should hit around there. All right, you guys can see I'm a little bit off. I'm not perfect with this either, and I'm just trying to show you guys. So now let's focus on down and in. All right, this is where it gets a little difficult. It runners on. So sometimes, yeah. Kershaw, it's kind of hard to pitch off the stretch. But there, see, it, it pretty much hit our spot. We didn't hit it perfectly, but it hit around there. And that's the good thing with analog. Say, if I aim down and in here, and I miss a little bit towards the middle, that means the ball is generally going to go back towards the middle a little bit. Now, if I'm pitching, trying to make this pitch again, and I, you know, hit up and to the left too far, it's going to generally hit in this area. You know, everything makes sense. Um, and if I'm late on the pitch, it's going to go farther down. If I'm early, it's going to go farther up. There is a little bit more variance this year, but generally that's how it works. So there's a lot of cool little things you can do with analog. So, like, for instance, if I want to throw a curveball and it's a two-strike count, I can throw it down. Something else that I can do is I can be super late on purpose to make sure it actually goes down even more all right so that was good timing there but those are some things you can do and same thing for a high fastball if you guys want to make sure you throw your high fastball even higher you can try to be a little bit earlier see it'll go even higher so there's little things you can do uh, just to help you guys out and something else you can think about is somebody's like trying to do a suicide squeeze and you and you're throwing like a high fastball and you see them laying down the squeeze and the, the runners going from third you know, you can intentionally be really early and throw it up in the zone like that. So there's a lot of little things you can do with analog that you can't do with the other interfaces. Uh, something else I want to talk about is slide stepping. So what you do is you hold L2, and this works for every uh, pitching interface, and you'll do a slide step. So I'll say I'm aiming up and to the right here, and I hold L2, alright, he's gonna, gonna do a slide step. It's a lot harder to hit your spot that way, but it, it gets the ball quicker to the plate so you have a better chance of throwing the runner out if you think he might be going. Uh, it also show your opponent that you're slide stepping so they might not even attempt to steal. So there's little things you can do to help you. Um, now keep in mind, every pitcher has a different wind up and delivery uh, off the stretch. So they're all a little bit different. It takes a little bit uh, to get used to, especially with a pitcher like Kershaw. So make sure you guys practice. Uh, you guys kind of just have to get a feel for it. Some guys I think have too long of a wind up and I think some guys have too short of a, a delivery off the stretch like Kershaw. I'm not a huge fan of his off the stretch, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. Uh, something else I want to talk about, and this is kind of going back to the to the walks per nine and you know the, the accuracy and all that. Um, it doesn't matter what their attributes are. If they throw harder, it's harder to hit your spot. It doesn't matter. I've tested it a lot. So if you're using somebody like Chapman and you're using somebody, I don't know, that throws like 90 miles an hour, uh, the guy that throws 90 mile an hour is going to have an easier time hitting his spot uh, pretty much regardless of his walks per nine, unless it's just a lot lower. But for the most part, guys that don't throw like with high velocity like Cole Hamels or Adam Wainwright, for the most part, it's going to be a lot easier to control those guys regardless of their walks per nine. Uh, that's just kind of how it's always been in the game. So just keep that in mind if there's two pitchers that have similar walks per nine. The guy that throws harder, it's always going to be a little bit more difficult to control his pitches. Uh, something else I want to talk about is the pitches themselves. Fastballs are always going to be the easiest pitches to locate, no matter what. Even if a guy, like I said, this is why I don't think control really does anything. Even if a guy has like 99 control on his slider. So say Kershaw has 99 control on his slider. I don't know if he does. I'm just saying that. It's still going to be harder to control that slider uh, compared to his fastball. We'll just say his fastball, let's just say it has like 70 control. Uh, it's still going to be easier to control the fastball. Trust me on that. Now, it does make it a little bit easier. It might make it a little bit easier to control the slider overall. But for the most part, fastballs are always the easiest pitches to uh, to control. Breaking balls are always going to be the most difficult to control. Uh, Curveballs, sliders, slurves. There's less room for error. And even when you execute perfectly, sometimes it's always not going to hit the spot what you want. That's why I recommended earlier. Like, if you're throwing a breaking ball down in the zone, that's why... You kind of want to be a little bit late with a pitch to begin with because it'll it'll make sure it'll get down in the zone and it won't hang. So those are little things you can do with analog. So analog, it offers you the most control, guys. Uh, that's definitely the biggest pro, and I would definitely recommend it. So if you guys have any more questions about pure analog, uh, you could feel free to let me know on Twitter or in the comments. And uh, really, it just takes a lot of practice to get used to it. But once you get used to it, um, not only does it give you the best results, in my opinion, I also think it's the most fun to use. 
Uh, it takes the most user skill, and it just feels a lot better than using something like meter. Anyways, thanks for watching the video, guys. This is Cardinal Bird 5, signing out. Peace.